Welcome to another adventure with Getting Lost. We are at our last part of our adventure here at Fort Siloso. Yes, so basically we, we came to this fort to look at an old fort and lots and lots of cannons. And also a few underground tunnels. Yep, so what are we going to do? We're just going to continue our journey and see what we can find here at this place called Fort Siloso. So, have you ever wondered where the word Siloso from the name of the fort here came from? It was actually derived from a Malayan word meaning rock. So, what happens was in the 1869, they opened the Swiss Canal. And because of that, suddenly there was more trade coming into Singapore. So they needed to protect this area here uh, from, of course, um, in the past, this area here used to have lots of uh, pirates. And then, of course, uh, another colonial superpower at that time were the Dutch. So to protect their interests from the Dutch and also from the pirates, they built a fort here at this island called Pulau Belakang Mati in 1874 and that the whole point for this fort is to protect Keppel Harbour and if you look at the floor here this is actually a old Japanese warplane engine which was actually excavated uh, somehow the plane crashed and then now they excavated it from the ground previously and now they put it here on display. Look at that. Look at all the carburetors. Okay, so let's get back to a bit of history. So Mount Siloso, the top of it was blown off to flatten the area so that you can install the coastal artillery gun platforms. And then they keep putting more uh, guns around here oh and this is another example of the 25 pounder howitzer cannon and they're going into here where there's actually another exhibition that tells you about what happened during the japanese occupation of singapore how the people lived, how they suffered, and their lifestyle during that time. So there's lots and lots of interesting things to see here. And also some audio-visual exhibitions too. So here is a very eye-opening exhibition that will uh, open your eyes to a different life, a different time of war that in our modern times we have forgotten about the suffering of the people, what happened, you know, the things that happened like this in Singapore, a lot of it has been forgotten. And the places too that it happened at. As we head to the most western part of the island, we come to this flag of stairs which will stick us down to a place called Siloso Point or its old Malay name Sarang Rimau or Tiger Slayer. In the 1930s, the Turner Complex here at this place housed the submarine mining post and engine room and was extended with the construction of a gun placement and a fire directional tower. This tall structure here is the Fire Direction Tower, which is part of the Coast Artillery Command, which directed guns with increased range and accuracy. Because of its height and location at Siloso Point, it commanded a clear view of the western entrance to Singapore. And look how steep the hill is here.
and then we also have here the 12 pounder quick firing gun breech loaded so during the time that this gun was used during world war ii it was already how do i say this uh obsolete but it was still used so unfortunately the gun that was originally here i didn't see any action during the war and it was actually thrown over the cliff after the british surrendered so that they could prevent its use by the japanese army and in a previous adventure we were walking along tanjong rimau during low tide now during high tide you can actually see how high the sea actually went up to right to the bottom of the observation decks at the bottom there the stilt area so not a place you want to be caught in during high tide So after the fire direction tower and the 12 pounder gun, you will come to the final the tunnel, the underground tunnel, yes, yes, which is up these stairs. Yep, so we walk all the way up here, and this is where the final set of tunnel is, underground tunnels, and you can come into all the different rooms here. And you can actually see all the underground structure. Uh, this one is actually where in the past you'll be opened up to the sea and you can have an observer here with binoculars uh, looking out into the sea. So a majority of the rooms here as you can see for storage. And here was actually the Submarine Mine Command Center where they operated the mines which were planted around the sea in front of Fort Siloso. It was actually uh, activated remotely using electricity. So we just walk along here and just see what we can find. So they needed to have generators and generators ran on either coal or oil. So over here in this underground complex here, there's actually some uh, oil, oil, oil tanks where they stored oil to run the electric generators. Gas here. Huge, huge gas tank. And finally, we're heading out. We are finally heading out from the tunnels, and here you can actually see some more examples of cannons. These five guns you see in front of us are the 64-pounder rifle muscle-loaded cannon or gun. So these cannons would have been used initially when the fort was built. Unfortunately, they became obsolete and most of them were scrapped and disposed of. These three cannons you see here was actually moved 
from the Pearl Hill Police Headquarters and mounted here in 1974. Then right next to the cannons are the 13-inch trench mortars which date back to the early 1800s. These uh, interesting mortars were designed to fire explosive projectiles at a steep angle and reach a high trajectory over the enemy's ramparts which was effectively used in World War I. Uh, these types of mortars were not actually used in Fort Siloso but they were donated here to this place and it was originally displayed at the Victoria Memorial Hall in Singapore and later moved to the National Museum and then finally to this place here 1969 and down there you can see the other two 64 pounder cannons from the Pearl Hill headquarters Next, we're heading to the surrender chamber. Marshal Robert Brooke Popham. British people have really funny surnames. Anyway, this is the surrender chamber. I'm waiting to get in. Waiting for the next exhibit. So it's a multimedia exhibition. So we just come in here and wait for it to start. So I wanna show you how the exhibition goes. You want to know more, you have to actually come here and exhibit, watch it yourself. But this is actually a reenactment of the surrender of the Japanese to the British after World War II and also a very interesting information in a previous video we went to the Japanese cemetery park and we went to this uh, war memorial of an individual called Terauchi Hisaichi and that person was actually supposed to be at this surrender ceremony but unfortunately he actually fell ill. It is said he suffered a stroke in Saigon and he was actually finally moved to a prison camp in Johor which at that location he actually passed away and his remain was cremated at the Japanese cemetery park and then finally brought back to Japan. And in front of the surrender chambers there are these two guns which are special and unique because these two guns are the 140 millimeter coastal defense guns they were designed in 1941 as coastal artillery and manufactured in kure arsenal in 1923 these Japanese guns were found in Singapore's Bandai jungle in 1966. They are presumed to have been installed by the Japanese during the occupation of Singapore. Nearby, we have this structure called the guard room. So you have again a few like EV mannequins. and the British flag. So this is the place where soldiers who were tasked with guard duties stayed during the period of their duty. And so this is an example of how the guard room looks like. They even have an old style fan, if you can call it that. It's more like swishing sheets. And you also have a picture of the Queen.
and we are leaving the main fort area but before we go let me show you something okay you need to head down this flight of stairs and at the bottom what you can see there was an old jetty so when Fort Siloso was planned there was no access road to come here so what they need to do is they need to actually build a pier so this pier had to be constructed before any work could be done here so every piece of equipment and people who constructed the fort came across from this pier and this pier was in constant use even after the roads were built several years later so in the late 1940s soldiers would take a bump boat from this pier across to Jardine Steps for some uh, recreation time paying a few cents for each crossing and they return the same way unfortunately the pier due to being used less and less fell into disrepair and if you actually followed me on my previous journey where we walk along uh, Tanjong Rebound you will see the state of the pier how it is now at low tide okay so this is the end of our adventure here at Fort Siloso I hope you enjoyed it as per usual like share and subscribe what else uh, I got Patreon I got PayPal you can also support me on those or lastly but the most important thing the thing that you have to do is to join me for my next adventure I will see you guys around bye bye oh yeah a bit clumsy <laughs>